Welcome to another video by Pharos Technology. Today we're going to show you how to set up your spell check and your grammar checking. But let's start by checking on the options that exist for spell check and for word. And you find those under the file menu and come down here to the bottom and go to look at options. And under proofing, you see the information about spell check and grammar check. So here it says when correcting spelling, okay, in Microsoft Office programs, you can check or uncheck these various things like ignore words in uppercase. Usually that's a good idea because something in uppercase is usually an acronym or something you don't want to spell check. Ignore words that contain numbers. Usually those are names or identifiers for things, index values or such. Ignore internet and file addresses. You don't want it to spell check your internet address that you've put into the middle of the document, okay? You can enforce accented uppercase if you're French. I'm not, so I won't check that one. Uh, and suggest from the main dictionary only. You can also create custom dictionaries. And in, in the medical profession, there's some custom dictionaries that exist for just the medical profession so that when you're writing a document and using medical terminology, you don't have to constantly tell it to add a new one to the spell check when you use a different medical term. So you have a French mode and a Spanish mode that you can look at and, you know, check those if you need to or change those if you need to. Now, when correcting spelling and grammar together, you can then go down here to, to this section and check spelling as you type and mark grammar errors as you type. Some people don't like the grammar checker in words, so they would uncheck it here if they wanted. Frequently confused words like lay and lie and, you know, the two different words, um, ways to spell lie, for example. Check the grammar with refinements in the editor pane. We're going to show you the editor pane at the end of this video. Now, we can check grammar and refinements, or we can just check grammar if we want. And the settings for those are really quite interesting. If you go look here, if you check for grammar and refinements, it looks at all of these items and there's a really long list. Now, after a while, it gets to be less of those. Like you can check for jargon. You can check for passive voice or passive voice with an unknown actor. You can do many of those types of things that are not included just in the normal. And you might want to have a check for just in case. And here's a whole section on how to be formal in your writing that doesn't come with the normal grammar and refinements unless you actually come in here and check on it. And then punctuation, uh, resume. Uh, if you're doing a resume, you can check those items as well. So a lot of different items. And so what I want to do next then is show how to use the spell check. And I'm going to drop some text in here. And I want to do this to show that how Microsoft Word spell checks and grammar checks the various items in here. So, like for example, this first sentence. There are times when we accidentally write the word read when we meant the word red, as in a color, because there's two ways to pronounce R-E-A-D. Now the way that would show up here is not as a spelling error, but if I put the A in here and then tabbed out of it, it'll show up as a grammar error because it, you know, R-E-A-D is a correct spelling of a, of a word. So the only way that you're going to see that you misspelled that particular one is to know that the underlines are in blue. So you want to have spell check on there in case you might actually accidentally write the wrong spelling of what you intended to be the right word. If you right click on it and go to grammar here, it will tell you that red, and it'll give you a definition of red. And if you meant the color red, that definition ought to help you to decipher that, oh, that's why it's telling me that it's the wrong word. So I'll go ahead and write that. So uh, the mood, moon jumped the cow here. This is the time that tries men's soul. So what happens then if I take the apostrophe away from men's? and tab out, what you'll see is that it will put the squiggly under there and say that's actually misspelled. If I right click on it, it says men's with the apostrophe, which means possessive. And it'll say, well, means or men, because there is no word that really is men's because men is plural. So you wouldn't ever have S directly after the word men's. 
So if I check that, it does this. Now, coming down here, there's this word ties. Now, what's wrong with that sentence? It's the right spelling for the word ties. Shirts, ties, and vests. Word adheres to the standard that there should be a comma be after every entry in a list. So if I right click this, they'll say it's a punctuation convention and that I should put a comma after ties. So, and then it explains the error up here so you can learn a little bit and then you click ties and it corrects it. Down here, it's a different error. It's an, another grammatical error. And if you right click on it, it's basically telling you that any and all is redundant. So it would be clearer if you only used one of them. So instead of saying, uh, as people pursue any and all means, you could say people pursue any means of transportation or people pursue all means of transportation, but saying any and all is kind of redundant. So it'll, it will suggest that you get rid of one of those two, okay? So that is how that you actually use the spell check and the grammar check to actually uh, drill in and use the context menu to correct those errors. And that's really all you need to know in order to go forward. Now, if you want to see what the editor pane looks like, if we go look at this edit, uh, entry right here called editor and we click on it, we get a panel over here. Now, we've already corrected all the spelling errors and all of the punctuation errors and the redundancies and the grammar problems that were in this particular text. So this editor score is giving me 100% because it's gone through all of its checks and it says that it's 100% correct. But here you can see that it'll tell you how many corrections you, spelling errors you have, how many grammar errors you have, and how many refinement items you, that you have here. Some for clarity, some for conciseness, the any and all was a conciseness one. Punctuation, that comma after the second to last list bef an item before and was a punctuation convention that we weren't following. And so these things can check for various items. And as you go through this, you can then click on the number that is over here and see it. In other words, if I were to recopy this and uh, show you what it looked, would look like before, the editor check. I'm going to put in all the other stuff and force the spell check to check it again. Now see, 95%. And see down here in conciseness, there's a number here. So I can click on conciseness here and I can then right click on it and correct that and resume checking. And now I can check punctuation and I can right click there, click on ties and then if I continue checking there, it's finished with all of the items that the editor pane found. And so it says we're done. And now we have a 100% score and we are done with the error checking and spell checking. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you join us for other videos in the future. Thanks.